What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with the long-requested U6 to U7 raid conversion guide. Now, basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over a couple of the U6 teams that we know are successful, then I'm going to go over a couple of the U7 teams that we know are successful, kind of paint you a picture of which characters are going to be worth investing in and which characters are going to be better off just left on the wayside. Now, starting off, we have the Pure Guardians team. The Pure Guardians team is exactly what it sounds like, just the Guardians. This team is more than adequate to complete all of U6, as well as having a good overlap with Greek raids, as you've seen in the previous videos. So if you don't have access to Minerva and Thanos, you just basically lost the ability to auto-fight immediately at a very low investment. This team should be no issue whatsoever, as well as having a nice overlap of characters that are very good in Dark Dimension 1 and Dark Dimension 2 somewhat. So you should have no problem investing in this team for U6. That said, not a great deal of these characters show up in U7 teams, maybe with high red stars and maybe if you're very lucky, you can get through 30%. I believe that this team and the BKT, as we'll go into next, are adequate to do one or two nodes in U7, but ultimately you're not going to be using them to progress further. The next team, of course, BKT. Uh, switch these placements. You know, Thanos goes in the middle, Minerva goes here. But other than that, this team is designed specifically to crush U6. The main reason why is U6 was designed at a time where there wasn't a very large gap of, of power between certain characters. The first U6 teams were very similar to the first U7 teams. We'll see that in a sec. The characters are all about 40 to maybe 50k at the highest possible power level. And Rocket can pretty much kill them all with his ultimate, especially with Star Lord and Groot present. So this team has widely been regarded as the best U6 team. And the great news is... At least you get to invest in Minerva, Rocket, Groot, and Star Wars characters you probably already used to work towards Ultron, if so. Great investment overall. Not great in U7, but a great team in the same way the Guardians were. And there's a huge overlap between where you can use these characters in Greek raids, with the exception, of course, of Thanos. Can't be used in Gamma. Next team to note is the Defenders. Now, as you probably know, I don't like this team. I don't respect this team. That said... A lot of people have used the Defenders for success in U6, so I'm going to put them on the list. That said, the Defenders are not winning in U7. You may be able to get a node down, maybe two. Unless you have way too much investment on this team, you are not going to have a great time with it. Ultimately, Jessica Jones and Punisher stand out as the best characters on the team for what U7 is trying to do. But ultimately, you're not going to do it anyway. The Defenders are not worth the investment. If you have them, you can use them for U6 while you work on good teams that do stuff that matter. Again, the Defenders can be used in City Nodes, Bio, Skill Nodes, most of them Mystic. They, they're really only good in one Greek raid, not good in U7. I give this team an F-, minus, but they can do better than like the Mercenary Minions. So They're adequate enough for team for U6, but I wouldn't count on them for U7 or much other endgame content. Uh, another team, I'm just going to skip over them right now, uh, Fury Shield. Fury Shield was the answer to U6 for a very long time, and that hasn't changed. They're still absolutely phenomenal at sustaining through U6 all the way up to, and including the final boss fight. They are also adequate for a lot of the Greek raids. They are, however, pretty useless when it comes to U7. A lot of that is just based on damage. You can't sustain the pure amount of damage the U7 characters are coming out with. Maybe one or two nodes, but again, nothing after that. Uh, there's also no major overlap between these characters and success. So the fact that you're getting a good Greek raid team, the fact that you're getting a good U6 team out of them, you're also getting a good war offense team out of them until you get Coulson, and then they're a defense team. And how excited are you going to be about getting a team that gets placed on defense not much, right? So, good option, but not really much longevity. Uh, the next team I'm going to talk about is the one I skipped, Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse is a new team because Symbiote Spider-Man made it possible. Now, this team doesn't need much, and you'll notice I don't have Spider-Man on this team because Ms. Marvel, in my experience, is way better. Now, this team is definitely adequate to complete all of U6, at a very moderate to reasonable investment, and by that I mean if everyone's between 35 and 45k power, you should have no problem. 
I personally prefer Ms. Marvel. I like all of what her kit does. I like the fact that she can heal herself as well as spread out some energy, do AoE, and trigger an awful lot of assists from Miles and Symbiote Spider-Man. Both characters, phenomenal when they're assisting. Carnage and Venom are just 100% drain characters in this fight, so they sustain themselves very well. Miles and Spider-Man tend to be a little bit weaker and might take a little bit more damage, so having that reflexive taunt on Ms. Marvel will definitely help. Now, as far as U7 goes, I have definitely beaten the first two plus boss node with this team. I have not tested them much further because my team is not, as I consider, strong enough to bother, but I will give a little bit more testing. If you do have Symbiote Spider-Man, you probably do have access to some of the other characters in this list. They will be adequate not only for U6, but definitely for U7, at least in the early stages of U7. I wouldn't trust them too much. They are really good in bio nodes, in Greek raids. All of these characters are somewhat usable. A lot of the nodes do require either Spider-Verse or... No, Spider-Verse specifically. So ultimately, this team is okay to invest in for one reason or another. They're also great at war on both sides. I just don't know if this team overall is going to carry into U7 success yet. We will see as time progresses. And the last team to show is a, another newer team, but I just wanted to represent something that's true. Ultron, on his own, can do pretty much anything in U6. Uh, the AIM team, on their own, like replacing Ultron with Researcher, can sustain enough, very much like how Fury Shield works, uh, to complete all of the U6. They are a phenomenal team. The issue is, by the time most players have decided to start investing in these characters, they already have Ultron. They're already probably putting a little bit of effort into U7. And the good news of this team is that the overlap of Scientist Supreme and Ultron is pretty useful in U7, as you'll see. Even Graviton and Scientist Supreme is a nice little two-piece combo in U7. And I'll probably do an entire video on two-piece combos in the game. But overall, you'll see this team will be adequate for U6. This team will be adequate for pretty much every single Greek raid, except anything that requires Ultron. But we already knew that because you watched the video. And this team is fine for U6. And it will kind of overlap with U7. Going straight into U7, I'm going to start with the team everybody talks about, everyone's aware about, the Techwing team. Now, it's Ultron, Scientist Supreme, Shuri. You're going to see these three characters a lot. And then it's Minerva and Falcon. The entire point of this team is have Falcon special as often as he can so that your characters don't time out. I don't like this team, not because I don't think it's good, but because I think it's a trap. I think that People were more inclined to invest in characters like Falcon and Minerva because they think that the stronger the team is, the better they'll do. Uh, this team is a temporary solution to a long-term problem, and the problem is that the U7 raid just currently doesn't have the correct answer yet. So I don't imagine this team being great uh, shy of a crazy investment in Red Stars past the 60% range, but this team will be completely adequate, not only for easy 30% of a U7, but maybe even helping your alliance hit 60% uh, or that mythical 42%, which is where you start getting the same amount of uh, rewards or raid season points as you do for a 100%ing a U6. I know, right? Crazy. I did math. Um, but that said, if this is your starter team or some combination thereof, the great news is Ultron, Scientist Supreme, and Shuri uh, are reused quite a bit. Even Minerva has some value in this. So if you just use Falcon for his special and invest in at least three of these five characters, you'll probably be able to work on another more successful U7 team. Speaking of another more successful U7 team, I'm going to mention the team that I use. This I, I called it Ultra Bolt. I don't care. It doesn't have a name. It's just those three characters, Ultron, Shuri, and Scientist Supreme, featuring Black Bolt and Yo-Yo. Yes, this team needs Black Bolt and Yo-Yo. Who do you replace Black Bolt with? Uh, someone uh, else. And then you also replace Yo-Yo. This is the combo. The two-piece here. So it's the three characters that you're going to see in every team. And then it's Yo-Yo, who doesn't require that, that much power to stick her offense down because... All of the characters that you're facing will have nerfed resistance, at least in the six or seven first nodes you're going to experience. So Yo-Yo doesn't need to be that strong. Another benefit of Yo-Yo and Black Bolt as a combo is when you put tier fours into her basic, it will always cause Black Bolt to assist. And since Black Bolt is the uh, second 
primary damage dealer on this team besides Ultron, you're going to get a lot of value out of her. You almost never have to hit her special. As for Black Bolt, I don't have to go into much. He is a massive damage dealer, AoE damage. He has a triggered ability that can execute a character when they get low just on his own. I don't have to go into detail on why he's a great character. I don't think I have to go into detail on why I think this is a great team. But again, this is the team I've been using relatively easily. I don't really have too many issues. Sometimes I change it up for a node or two. But this team, I've auto-fought multiple nodes, just making sure in the last 10 to 20 seconds that I'm basicing so I could save up all of the energy for the next node. And I think you'll have a lot of success with this team. Again, another key component is Ultron, Shuri, and Scientist Supreme. What you're going to see is if you don't have these three characters, you're probably not going to have a good time. Moving into a, another team. This is a team taught me by Remin X. Uh, a lot of whales were using this team very early. This is called Ultron's Angels. Ultron's Angels are, again... Ultron, Shuri, Scientist Supreme, this time featuring Invisible Woman and Minerva for survivability. This is like the Tech Wing, just completely flip the coin. Tech Wing is about how fast you can take a node uh, using one or two characters. This one is not about taking a node quickly. It's about controlling the node for all five minutes, making sure that even if you are going to have to go in a second time, with more energy, your entire team is fully capped, fully healed, and ready to go. You're never going to lose. So this team is great uh, at pretty much low level of investment. Just And low level is unique. I wouldn't recommend bringing any character under gear tier 13 into U7. But you can probably squeeze one or two characters at gear tier 12 in without worrying too much. Especially because you have two reses on this fight. Uh, there's a little bit of tier 4 investment that would be required in here. For example, Invisible Woman will need her special and her ultimate. Shuri will need her passive, I believe, and maybe her ultimate. Ultra, no question, Scientist Supreme definitely will need her special, and Minerva never needs a tier 4 ever under any circumstances. This team will be great, especially if you can beat the first two nodes with one of your other teams. You can go into the boss node with this team, two-tap it, and then progress probably a little bit more. Again, this is not a team that's supposed to win quickly. This is a team that's supposed to allow you control enough that when you do two-tap a node, you will enter the next node at full charge. Overall, fine team. Uh, the last team I'm going to mention before I go into flex options is the Dontron. Dontron is a team that my stream will be familiar with. A guy named Don Satori came up with it. He is a crazy man who does nothing but succeed despite everyone's best uh, efforts to stop him. Now, he has a very high investment in Hela and Thor. As you'll notice, Scientist Supreme and Ultron are also on this team. He uses either Minerva or Shuri, depending on the node. I tried it both ways. My Thor is nowhere near as strong as his. That said, because of the interaction of Greg and Thor, and because the AI just loves to kill Greg, Thor ends up getting a lot of extra passive damage in, which can be the difference between winning quickly and winning slowly. Hela gives you an awful lot of control. She has a, an execute on her basic. She can remove death proofs from key, key nodes. And Greg is just crazy. So I've used this team to some success. I haven't gone too much further with this team than I have with the team I mentioned earlier, the uh, Ultra Bolt. But... That's mostly because I don't want to invest in Thor, and I'm sure if I did, I would have more success. I do know many people from my stream who have used this team recently to a lot of success. Feel free to stop by and ask them uh, what they do specifically, and of course, I'll always give it a shot. Maybe I'll put a little bit more into Thor and show it off on a stream. This kind of showcases that if you use Ultron, Scientist Supreme, and either Minerva or Shuri, specifically Shuri, but in this case, Minerva's fine. Only because, if you didn't figure it out, if Hela does die and you res her before the other Greg dies, you get two Gregs. It's the best amount of Gregs. Anyway, I'm going to go now into the flex characters. Now, the flex characters are characters that have value, but they don't really have a team or I wouldn't necessarily recommend because a lot of times these characters require high red stars or high investment. So it's really going to come into what you've done. The first is vision. I use vision with Hela on the mechs and minions node, of course, still using scientist Supreme Shuri and Ultron. And I click auto fight and I only select the targets and I win with minutes to spare. 
Um, it is a very efficient team. As a matter of fact, with the last minute left, I do tend to stop and start auto basicing to make sure that I have energy for the next boss fight or boss node rather. But uh, Vision, his ability block, absolutely cannot be understated in some of these fights, especially if he guarantees to stick it. He starts with defense up, and as you notice, most of the characters you bring in are all tech, so they also get defense up. And he has an AoE buff clear. Huge. Great, great value character. If you have him, feel free to use him. Uh, moving into Phoenix, she's like a skeleton key with a one-time use. You can just apply Phoenix either on the X-Men team or just on any team, really, to beat whatever the node that's troubling you. So feel free to, if you ever want to test what the next fight is, or if you guys are pushing for 30, pushing for 60%, and you're like, I just got to get this node down, that's where you use Phoenix. You put her in, you do as much damage as you can, you let her flip, just be very careful, make sure she doesn't die too quickly, because they do do a lot of damage, do do, and you'll be fine. Sinister, also kind of like Phoenix, He's more of a Swiss army knife than a skeleton key. Uh, basically, you look at the node ahead of time and you go, hmm, there's a Groot there. There's a Minerva there. There's a Magneto there. There's a character that would definitely help me defeat this node. Uh, I'm going to use Sinister. I'm going to take him and, and kind of increase the utility of my team. He also has an off heal and a pretty decent damage on his basic. Uh, again, you probably need a good investment in him, like probably close to gear tier 13, maybe a good number of stars and red stars. I wouldn't I wouldn't feel comfortable bringing less than 50k of Sinister into a node, but that's me. You might have different results. The next two are Captain Marvel and Ultimus. I'm going to kind of group them together. Uh, Captain Marvel is kind of that character that you lean on because you've invested in because she's so good on her own that why not? She's great if you just need an extra damage dealer or if you're missing out on a part of a previous team. I would have no problem bringing in Ultron, Shuri, Scientist Supreme, Captain Marvel and Minerva or Captain Marvel and a tank or Captain Marvel and Sinister or any of these combinations. You know, she's just a good all around damage dealer who sustains herself. Ultimus works well with Captain Marvel. He's also very good on key nodes. The problem with Ultimus is not many people have invested in him, and I still wouldn't recommend it. It's just if you happen to have invested in Ultimus for one reason or another, you can find a lot of success with him as a two-piece with either Captain Marvel or with Minerva on the team and pretty much move from there. That's pretty much it as far as which teams are going to be. So I'll just give you a quick look at all of them. We real quick. The the biggest issue with U7, I just want to say this now so everyone hears it, is we don't have the current answer to U7. It's very obvious that U7 was designed with a answer in mind, and that answer probably was ISO 8s. But as you'll see, even some of the whales and the highest tcp rosters are still spending a good chunk of energy and uh, raid heals and even cores to progress past a certain point uh, and that is because the 30 percent of u7 is a little bit more challenging than the u6 the 60 percent u7 is pretty much a only bring gear tier 13 characters in with a few exceptions and anything past 60 percent is a completely different game mode where red stars start mattering because if you have four red stars then you're just not strong enough you need five or six so i think that the point of it was that u7 was supposed to be a challenge and there was supposed to be either a new character a new team uh iso eights more red stars something was supposed to happen but in traditional fox next fashion they didn't do that and here we are just eating garbage in u7 um i wouldn't say that you should panic to enter U7. I know a lot of people tend to believe that. Like, well, if you're not in U7, you're not progressing. The truth is, if you don't hit 42% in U7, you get less raid season points than you would if it's 41.5. But 42% of U7 is the exact same raid season points or slightly higher raid season points than you would obtain from 100%ing uh, U6. So you technically are being more competitive 100%ing U6 if you can't get 42% in U7, if you understand what I mean. And the rewards for U7 are still relatively lackluster. I can't wait for them to add the difficulty dial, which one, will definitely break stuff, and two, will definitely not be more or less rewarding considering how difficult it is right now and how garbage the rewards in right now are. 
it's unlikely that changing the difficulty is going to improve the rewards by any stretch of the imagination. Comment below and let me know what teams you use in U7, if none of these um, line up with yours. If you have a specific idea, I mean, honestly, I would never have found the Dontron team if I didn't ask. So that's what I'm doing. I'm asking uh, anyone who's using different or weird or unique teams, let me know below. Also, like, comment, and subscribe. I don't do it often, but I do like to remind people, like, if th they matter. That helps me. It helps me kind of grow the channel a little bit and eventually do more and cooler stuff with probably a better microphone. So I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.